So if you're working with an x-ray system, one of the things you're going to look at or possibly be part of your x-ray is explosive detection. And a lot of x-ray systems have the ability to automatically detect explosives. Now they do this by measuring two different things, the density and the average effective atomic number of whatever material is being scanned inside uh, that package. So this is done with a high and low energy measurement, and from that they're able to figure out where um, or if the material falls into the ranges where we know that we typically see organic-based explosives. And in my other videos, I've told you that the x-ray systems that are on the market today are only doing organic-based explosives. They cannot detect the inorganic explosives, and that's a whole other story. But part of this explosive detection is not, you know, just because they do those two measurements, any explosive material that's in the bag is now going to be detected. It doesn't work that way. And what happens is a lot of these x-ray vendors will build into this system or the algorithms a prerequisite based on a size or an amount uh, that needs to be there before the system will actually draw a red box around something and say this potentially can be an explosive. Now this is referred to in the industry as threat mass. And threat mass is something that uh, is kind of a mystery to a lot of people, but I'm going to explain it to you today. Because there's a lot of misconceptions out there in regards to what threat mass is, uh, how it works, and basically how an x-ray can tell based on the size of an explosive it's, if it's within a certain range or whatever. Um, so we're going to show you that, and we're going to show you that it's, there's a lot of holes in this, and we'll show you why, um, based on the density of the actual explosives that you're encountering. Now, first off, an x-ray machine cannot tell you the weight of an item. So if a vendor comes to you and says that my x-ray machine can detect one pound or a half pound of explosives, that's not true, okay? It's absolutely not true. They can't detect a specific weight um, with those, that dual energy measurement. What they can do is detect a pixel range um, with a single dual view or um, like an ATIC system, which has four generators. Um, they're looking at a pixel range or a number of pixels um, based on materials discrimination, that dual energy measurement. They're able to see that within that range, this falls within the window where I should be seeing these organic explosives and they'll draw a red box around that. Now, if you don't have enough pixels that fit into that, whatever that cutoff is, that threat mass, the system will not alarm to that. So a lot of times, and most of the x-rays here um, that we deal with, there is a cutoff built into them, and, and it's kind of in a range where people think, oh, that's okay. It's not. I'm a bomb technician. I calculate net explosive weights. I'm a breacher instructor. I went to the breacher schools in the United States Marine Corps. We get knee-deep in calculating blast pressure and net explosive weight of our explosive charges because the closer you get to it, the more the blast pressure is going to have an effect on a person's body. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of, let's say, male screening, the amount of explosives can be very small in regards to how much damage you can do to a person. Okay, so the average in regards to the, the literature that's out there is anything that's over about 276 kPa or 40 psi um, is going to cause critical to terminal injuries to an individual. That's, that's pounds per pressure per square inch. That's blast pressure. That is not taking into consideration fragmentation. Okay, so when a vendor says I can do a half pound or a two pounds or whatever, a half pound is a lot of explosives, okay? As a bomb technician, I'm telling you right now, a half pound is a lot of explosives. A quarter pound is a lot of explosives. A detonator by itself will blow every finger off your hand, okay? These are high explosives. They're extremely powerful. This is not like fireworks or, or you know, a sparkler or a firecracker. These are very powerful explosives. So what we're going to show you is how that pixel range actually is very vague in regards to how much uh, a weight or amount of explosives that could be there if you're trying to figure out what pixel range is going to be relatively you know, safe for the amount of explosives. It all ties into the density of the explosive material. And we're going to explain this. It's very basic. Okay. So what we're going to use as a reference is these little 3.4 ounce um, you know, airline approved containers, okay? And this one right here is exactly 1.5 inches in diameter, and it's about 3.5 inches in length, okay? Um, we've measured it, we know what it is. So I can actually put it on my little scale here and go ahead and weigh this. And it comes out to a very low weight. We're going to put this in 
grams. It comes out to about 16 grams, okay? So what we've done next is we've taken water. We've filled this one all the way up to the top with water. I'm going to tear this, okay? So we'll put the one back on there. We're tearing it, so we're basically saying don't count the weight of the, the bottle. We're just going to count the weight of the water, all right? So we put the water on there now, and we get a measurement of 105 grams. So the weight uh, in grant or the weight of the, the water inside here is 105 grams based on the amount of surface area or space it's taken up. So think of this area where the water is as a pixel range to your x-ray system. So if you run this through there, this is going to be a nice orange color. If this within, was within the range where their algorithms are looking for the explosives and it was uh, above their threat mass, it would alarm to this, okay? It would get an alarm on this amount of explosives, okay? Um, now, this material, water, has a density of 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, okay? It's pretty much the standard. So, water is going to have 1.0 gram per cubic centimeter, and in this much space, we've now measured it at 105 grams, all right? So, this is the, the pixel range, water, 1.0, 105 grams. Now this is Delrin. Delrin is a plastic and it's a great simulant for explosives. It, it falls right into the window almost perfectly where you see the Simtex's uh, uh, explosives about 1.41 grams per cubic centimeter. So in comparison to water, this has a much higher density in comparison. So what we did is we took the exact, so this is 1.5 inches in diameter, and it's 3.5 inches in length. So it's the exact same volume as this water, and we're now going to weigh it, okay? So I'm going to remove the tear on there because we're just going to weigh this as it is. And this now comes out to 166 grams. So the water in a 1.5 inch diameter tube, 3.5 inches long, density of 1.0 grams per cubic centimeter, weighed 105 grams. The same uh, volume for acetyl, 1.5 inches in diameter, 3.5 inches in length, has a weight going all the way up to 166 grams. So it's, as you go up in density, the weight of the material is going to increase uh, significantly. So we're looking at this one in the range of like a Simtex explosive. When you start getting into explosives like... Um, uh, C4, it's going to run in the 1.5, 1.6 range, and then you start getting to the, um, the chlorates, things of this nature, the density is going to get even higher, okay? So what happens is, is for a threat mass or a weight, so if your system's saying, I'm only going to alarm to this weight, so like if you ask Rapid Scan, their bulk explosive detection is supposedly 2.2 kilograms or 2.2 pounds, I don't know which one it is, it doesn't matter, because that's a lot. Of freaking explosives. Okay, this is a block of C4, not a real one, it's a, it's a simulant, um, but that weighs 1.25 pounds. Two kilograms or two pounds? Oh my god, that's a massive amount of explosives. You know what I, I mean? If that's where they're cutting off at explosives, oh my god, I don't know where you're working, but Jesus, I sure hope you can handle the explosion from something like that because my god, that's a massive amount of explosives. So what we're going to do is we want to match the weight of this material, okay, with the, the explosive material that's going to have a, a higher density. So if I were going to say I'm going to have the same weight with 1.41 grams Simtex explosives, and I place it on here, the weight of this now is 105 grams, okay? So let's take a look at the one that matched the water in perfectly in size in comparison to the one that matches it in its weight. So this is why an x-ray machine is never, ever, ever going to be able to tell you the weight of an explosive, okay? So if this is your threat mass, this amount of explosives is not going to be detected in your x-ray system, okay? And when you weigh this and you do all the math for this based on blast and fragmentation and all that, I went ahead and done all this for you. It basically comes out to about 0.37 pounds, all right? That, this amount right here is 0.37 pounds because it has a high density. The relative effectiveness factor for Simtex is 1.35. This is all math on calculating 
blast and frag uh, radiuses for explosives. Um, the net explosive weight is then going to end up being about 0.5 pounds or 0.227 kilograms. So I went online to, uh, to the UN calculator for blast and fragmentation. At one meter, you're going to be getting hit with uh, about 450 um, kPa. Now, critical to terminal injuries start at 276 kPa. So at one meter, you're probably going to die from this much explosives. Okay. Now, if this is male, it's going to be much closer to you when you're opening. So for male screening, you absolutely do not want some sort of cutoff that's in the range of, say, something like this. Because the amount of explosives, this amount of explosives, at 0.5 meters, it shoots all the way up to 2,036 kPa, um, which is way in excess of the critical to terminal injury threshold for the human body. So that, I want, I want you to understand that x-rays can't tell you the weight of a material. And they do their explosive detection based on a pixel range. And as bomb techs like myself start looking at that pixel range and start applying net explosive weights of what would fit inside that area, it's very disturbing when you start getting to the smaller amounts of explosives. So especially for male screening, especially if you start looking at it from a blast consideration, of a, a harm to a human being, your x-ray system has to be able to detect small amounts of explosives, okay? Very small amounts of explosives, because in male scenarios, it doesn't take much to kill a person. Now, if you have an x-ray machine and you have no idea if there's this type of cutoff on there, the perfect way to test this is with Delrin, okay? You can buy this on Amazon. Go on Amazon, purchase some Delrin, and you can get it in like a 1.25 inch diameter or 1.5 inch, that's fine. And then just cut it in different lengths, okay? Start off with 5 inches, 4, 3, 2, 1, and run it through your x-ray machine with your explosive detection turned on and see where it stops detecting. Once you see that point, you're going to realize this is where my threat mass cutoff is for this system. And remember what I've taught you today. When it comes to explosives, especially organic-based explosives, a very small amount can do a massive amount of damage. A massive amount of damage. So, you know, 2.2 pounds, oh my God, as a bomb tech, I'm telling you, your x-ray needs to detect way under that. I'm going to tell you, especially for male screening, you need to be down um, well below about a quarter of a pound or less uh, in your detection capability for explosives. All right? Um, anything anybody else is doing, I'm sure they have some reason for doing that. That's a risk they chose to accept, okay? You need to know what risk you're accepting when you purchase an extra machine. The vendors do not tell you this, and I think that's absolute crap that they don't do this, and I think there's a huge liability issue there involved in this because they're not telling you this. So let's say TSA decided, I don't want to alarm to my 3.4 ounce containers, and the pixel range just happens to come out to uh, 1.5 by 3.5, okay? But I buy an x-ray machine from one of these vendors, and they've got this TSA um, threat mass on there. I didn't accept this risk. I didn't say this was okay. I didn't say for my security purpose that this was going to be an acceptable risk that I'm going to accept, okay? Now, overseas, you can actually purchase an x-ray machine, and it lets you adjust that pixel range so you can choose yourself where you want to cut off your explosive detection. You know, somebody putting one on there, especially the vendors, and not telling you is a huge liability issue to you, okay? And I don't think um, Safety Act covers this because if you didn't know it was put on there and they never told you, uh, I think Safety Act's out of the window legally. So to verify where your x-ray is actually cutting off by Delrin, run it through the system, get with a bomb guy. There's, a, there's blast calculators on there. Uh, any one of us can like, teach you how to do this. It's a pretty simple process to figure out the blast effects um, for smaller amounts of explosives. And just remember, around 40 PSI or 276 kPa, that is critical to terminal injuries to the human body. And so when you're talking about male screening, you know this kind of distance right here, it takes very little explosives to actually cause a problem uh, in regards to harming you uh, bad. So check your x-rays, verify where that cutoff is, and remember, 
X-rays can't tell you how much something weighs. All they do with their explosive detection is pick out a pixel range and say, does it have the density? Does it have the average effective atomic number of where I have set my software algorithm to say, draw a red box around this? And the one they don't tell you about is the threat mass or that pixel range where they've decided, okay, we're not going to detect anything below this. That's a choice you should make, not the X-ray vendors.